Welcome to the continued reading of a series of articles that Dr. John G. Lake printed in the Sacramento Union newspaper during the months of July and August 1927. In two previous videos, you will find articles 1 through 12. In this particular reading, we're going to be doing articles 13 through 17. And Dr. Lake has settled in now, and he is using the title, The Truth About Divine Healing, for each successive article. Article 13, The Truth About Divine Healing. Jesus was tempted 40 days. Three temptations were presented. Firstly, physical hunger. Secondly, psychological, the love of acclaim. And thirdly, spiritual. Satan offered him all the kingdoms of the world for the acknowledgement of his superiority. Jesus rebuked Satan and drove him from his presence. Having overcome, the consciousness of inherent power was radiant in him. Luke 4 says he returned in the power of the Spirit. Jesus now makes the next advance. He proclaims his platform. Returning to Nazareth, he boldly declares, quote, The Spirit of the Lord is upon me. Number one, he has anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. Two, he has sent me to heal the brokenhearted. Three, to proclaim liberty to the captive. And four, recovering of sight to the blind. Five, to set at liberty them that are bruised. And six, to preach the acceptable year of the Lord. No more waiting for the release of the year of Jubilee. Jesus Christ, the eternal Jubilee, was at hand to save and heal. <sighs> Let's read that again and let it sink in. No more waiting for the release of the year of Jubilee. Jesus Christ, the eternal Jubilee, was at hand to save and heal. Jesus' ministry of healing and the marvelous faith in God he exhibited in miracle working form were no accident. Miracles must be his breath. For 800 years before his birth, the prophet Isaiah proclaimed, He will come and save you. Then the eyes of the blind shall be opened, the ears of the deaf shall be unstopped. Then shall the lame man leap as an heart, and the tongue of the dumb sing. Isaiah 35, 4-6 so to the Savior of the world, he must be forever the miracle worker of the ages, the death destroyer, the finality of the revelation of the majesty, power, and mercy of God. Oh, Jesus, the very name was a miracle. The angel announced it. Jesus' birth was a miracle. His wisdom was a miracle. His life was a miracle. His teachings were miraculous. He lived and walked in the realm of the miraculous. He made miracles common. His death was a miracle. His resurrection was a miracle. His appearances after death were miraculous. His ascension was a staggering miracle. His pouring out of the Spirit on the day of Pentecost was the outstanding miracle. 
It was the one event in which his whole saviorhood climaxed. Out of heaven was given to his followers the Spirit, capital S, the Spirit of the Eternal, capital E, to do in them all that it had done in him. Sickness and death and sin were doomed. He came, the Spirit came, as a roaring tempest, as tongues of fire, crowning the 120, as the living, eternal Spirit entering into them. He proclaimed his triumphant entry into man through speaking in languages they knew not. Jesus' deity had lifted them into his realm, transfigured them, transformed them, transmuted them. Article 14, again, the truth of divine healing continued. Jesus, having announced his platform, proceeded to demonstrate its practicability. In Matthew 4.23, we read, Jesus went about all Galilee, preaching in their synagogues and preaching the gospel of the kingdom and healing all manner of sickness and all manner of disease among the people. First, he was teaching. Second, preaching. Third, healing the sick. That is the eternal pattern of real Christian ministry. The multitudes overwhelmed him. Then he appointed the twelve apostles, commissioned and empowered them to do as he had done. Luke 9, 1-12 says, Then he called his twelve disciples together and gave them power and authority over all devils and to cure diseases. And he sent them to preach the kingdom of God and heal the sick. Soon they too were thronged by the multitudes, and Jesus was compelled to make a more extensive provision. This he did by calling and sending and the sending forth of the seventy. Luke 10 says, The Lord appointed another seventy also, and sent them two by two into every city where he himself would come. They were the advance guard the heralds of his coming. In commissioning the seventy, he reversed the order and commanded, Go into the cities round about and heal the sick that are therein, and say, The kingdom of God is come nigh to you. To the twelve he had said, Preach and heal. To the seventy he said, Heal the sick and then preach. One day the disciples came to Jesus and reported, We saw one casting out devils in thy name, and we forbade him, because he followed not us. Jesus said, Forbid him not. This man was not regular. He Now it's not speaking of Jesus, it's speaking of the man that was casting out devils in his name, but wasn't traveling with them. Jesus said, Forbid him not. This man was not regular. In other words, a regular part of Jesus' followers. He was an independent. This now then made a total of 84 who were healing the sick during the earth life, the earth life of Jesus. Jesus was the first, then the twelve, then the seventy, and then the man who followed not us. There is no scriptural evidence of any others being authorized to heal until after the resurrection. His death, his resurrection, and his ministry for 40 days in Galilee after he arose from the dead followed. And now Jesus breaks all barriers to the ministry of healing by making healing power and healing ministry the right of every believer.
The hour of his ascension is at hand. Oh, hallelujah. Let's listen in. The hour of his ascension is at hand. He issues his final instructions. It is his last word on earth. Go ye into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. And these signs shall follow them that believe. In my name shall they cast out devils. They shall speak with new tongues. And lastly, they shall lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. Mark 16, 16 to 18. And so healing was made a universal blessing forever. Finally, lest this wondrous wondrous power should be lost, it was included as one of the gifts of the Spirit. In 1 Corinthians 12, 8 through 12, we find enumerated the gifts of the Spirit, heaven's inducements that the church, his body, should be qualified and empowered forever to carry on Heaven's inducements that the church, his body, should be qualified and empowered forever to carry on all the ministry of Jesus and thus be a perpetual presence and power for salvation from sin and sickness. 1 Corinthians 12, 8-12 reads, To one is given by the Spirit the word of wisdom, to another the word of knowledge, to another faith. To another, the gifts of healing. To another, the working of miracles. To another, prophecy. To another, discerning of spirits. To another, diverse kinds of tongues. And to another, the interpretation of tongues. And lest we be negligent, we are reminded that Jesus Christ is the same. Yesterday, today, and forever. Article 15, continuing under the title, The Truth About Divine Healing. In order to be fully informed on the question of divine healing, let us study this question as part of the fully rounded development and life of Jesus. In beginning his revelation of the life of God for and in man, Jesus chose the order of nature as the realm of his first demonstration. Number one, Jesus turned the water into wine. Two, he stilled the waves. And three, he walked on water. These revelations of power over nature surpassed each other. Then Jesus astounded his followers by turning to the creative life of God. He fed the multitude by an act of creative power when he created fish and bread to feed 5,000. This shows the distinction between healing and miracle. Miracles are creative. Healing is a restoration of what has been. Miracles are creative. Healing is a restoration of what has been. <clears throat> Jesus now advances into a new sphere, the order of sickness, capital O, capital S, the order of sickness. Here he meets the mind of the other that must be conformed to his. Here he meets the mind of the other that must be conformed to his. Jesus heals Peter's wife's mother. This is first degree healing. Jesus meets the blind man and heals him. This is second degree healing. Third, the lepers are healed. Healing in the third degree. Again, Jesus enters the creative realm and creates eyes in a man born blind. Blindness from birth is evidence of an un- finished creation of the eyes. The creative process was not complete. Jesus stooped, took dust from the road, spat upon it, and put it on the man's eyes. In so doing, he finished a work of creation. 
and the man saw. Now Jesus again advances. This time he chooses the order of death, capital O, capital D, the order of death. One, he raised the daughter of Jairus, dead a few minutes. This is the first degree. Second, Jesus meets a funeral procession coming out of the city of Nain. He commands the young man to live, and he sat up. This man was dead many hours. This is the second degree. Third, his friend Lazarus is dead four days. His body is in a state of decomposition. Jesus commands Lazarus to come forth, and he that was dead arose. This was the third degree. Now, Jesus again steps into the creative realm and announces his coming death. He declares of life, I have power to lay it down and I have power to take it again. John 10, 18 Through this chain of successive abandonments to God, we discover the soul steps of Jesus. Every step was taken with reliance on the word of God as the all-sufficient guide. Jesus took the promises of God in the scriptures and permitted them to work out in his own soul. Therefore, his promises to us are not made on his own speculation, but because of his soul's discovery of the mind of God. But he did not let it rest there. He took each discovered promise and worked it out. He discovered the promise of supply and fed the multitude. He discovered healing power and made the blind to see and the deaf to hear and the lame to walk. He discovered the promise of man, the master, when anointed of God. And he stilled the waves and turned the water into wine of life ever present. And he raised Lazarus and the widow's son of life everlasting. And he rose from the dead. He gave his promises as discovered and demonstrated truth. He gave his promises as he discovered and demonstrated truth and tells us these things shall be ours, as we are lifted by the Spirit into the God realm, the Christ conscious realm. But it is the one real thing among the myriads of life's illusions, and contains in itself man's future hope and his transcendent glory. Herein is the true domain of God. He gave his promises as discovered and demonstrated truth and tells us these things shall be ours as we are lifted <clears throat> by the Spirit into the God realm, the Christ conscious realm. It is the one real thing among the myriads of life illusions and contains in itself man's future hope and his transcendent glory. Herein is the true dominion of man in the God realm, the Christ conscious realm. Article 16, The Truth About Divine Healing Continued We have followed Jesus through the continued ascents of his earthly career. Jesus has developed in faith and knowledge and in favor with God and man at every step. If we were to stop at this point and refuse to follow him to the throne of the universe, we would miss the whole purpose of his life. Divine healing and every other outflow of his holy soul would be beggared and perverted if we failed here. Christianity is not a mere philosophy. It is more. It is very much more. 
Christianity is not simply obedience to beautiful commandments. Christianity is not only the acceptance of glorious promises. Christianity is a divine content. Christianity is a heavenly dynamite. Christianity is the ultimate of all consciousness of God. Christianity is wholly supernatural. Christianity comes down from heaven, from the innermost heart of the glorified Christ. Christianity is in the innermost and uttermost of man, declaring, I am he that liveth and was dead. And behold, I am alive forevermore. Amen. And have the keys of death and hell. Christianity is the spotless descent of God into man and the sinless ascent of man into God. The Holy Spirit is the agent by whom it is accomplished. The significance of Jesus' death was not in his sacrifice only, but also in his achievement in the regions of death. He took death captive. He liberated those who, in death, awaited his coming and deliverance. Jesus took them in triumph from the control of the angel of death and transferred them to his own glory. David prophesied, Psalm 68:18. he ascended up on high, he led captivity captive, he gave gifts unto men, even unto the rebellious also, that they might know the mercy of the Lord. Peter declared, he went and preached unto the spirits in prison. When once the long suffering of God awaited in the days of Noah while the ark was a preparing. And lest we fail to comprehend the source of his ministry in death, Peter says again, For this cause was the gospel preached also to them that are dead, that they might be judged according to men in the flesh, but live according to God in the Spirit. 1 Peter 3.20 and four six. It is this marvelous experience of Jesus in death ministry that produced in his soul the glory power of the resurrection. Not only his personal triumph over death, but the release of those held in death's claims. Article 17. The truth about divine healing continued. In all the universe, there was none with such triumph in his spirit as Jesus possessed when death's bars were broken, when he with power heretofore unknown commanded his followers saying, all power is given unto me in heaven and in earth. Matthew 28, 18. Glorifying in this amazing ascent in consciousness, he instantly found the eleven and breathed on them, and saith unto them, Receive ye the Holy Ghost. This was Jesus' endeavor to lift them. This was Jesus' endeavor to lift them into the same soul triumph that he enjoyed. The ascension was a further advance in triumphant consciousness, climaxed by his presentation of himself at the throne of God, where Peter says he, quote, received from the Father the promise of the Holy Ghost, Acts 2.33. This was Jesus' divine equipment as world savior. From then on, he was empowered to administer the transcendent, transcendent glory power to all who would receive. Divine healing, saving power, the empowering of the Christian soul from on high, 
which is the pouring forth of the Holy Spirit by Jesus Christ, High Priest of Heaven. The Ascension was a further advance in triumphant consciousness, climaxed by his presentation of himself at the throne of God, where Peter says he, quote, received from the Father the promise of the Holy Ghost. This was Jesus' divine equipment as world savior, <laughs> receiving from the Father the promise of the Holy Ghost. From then on, he was empowered to administer the transcendent glory power to all who would receive. Divine healing, saving power, the empowering of the Christian soul from on high, which is the pouring forth of the Holy Spirit by Jesus Christ, the high priest of heaven that we might realize the uttermost of ultimate transcendence of the soul of Jesus in glory. Oh, that we might realize the, to the utmost the ultimate transcendence of the soul of Jesus in glory. Hear him declare anew. I am he that liveth and was dead. Oh, and behold, I am alive forevermore and have the keys of hell and of death. Dr. Lake concludes with this statement. Who would not rejoice to place himself in the hands of such a savior and physician? Answering forever the world's questions. Is he able to heal? Does he ever heal? Does he always heal? To all, then, we boldly say, Yes, he is Jesus, the triumphant, the eternal, the omnipotent. Hallelujah. And that concludes the reading of this series of articles, article 13 through 17. Next, we will begin with article 18, and we may be concluding our readings then. So God bless you all. I pray that you have been benefited by that and this and I pray for the eyes of your understanding to be enlightened. I was struggling myself with some of the concepts that Dr. Lake was putting forth. His understanding of the scriptures and the walk of Jesus with the Father and the ministry of Jesus and how even there Jesus grew in his own understanding of the gospel being ministered on earth and transforming people's lives. We must remember that Jesus laid aside his privileges as deity when he came to earth and he was ministering under the power of a man empowered by the Holy Spirit as an example to us. God bless you all. Father, I thank you and I cast this seed out today upon the waters of men's hearts. I pray, Father, that you will help them to grow in understanding of the person of Jesus and his past and present day ministry. In his name I pray. Amen.